What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to this late, late version of the Anfield Agenda Transfer News Roundup. The reason I'm coming back on after finishing our live stream is to just summarise the state of play for everybody. Because a lot of people have been asking tonight, Craig, is it true that the deal for Zubamendi could be resurrected? I'm going to try my best to answer that as honestly as I can over the next 8 to 10 minutes, as well as give you the latest, of course, on potential incomings at left back the departure of Bobby Clark and a couple of other bits and pieces over the next few minutes. We want to know your thoughts though, so do let us know in the comment section if you think it can be revisited or not. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm also delighted to announce that, as you can see on the screen there now, we are coming back over to Liverpool. We were shown such a good time when we were over there for the show a couple of weeks ago that we thought, hey, Let's do it again, but this time let's go bigger and better. So November 15th at the Hot Water Comedy Club, it is going to be myself, Connor, Mr. Carl Porter doing another stand-up set, and this time we're bringing a musician along with us as well, Mr. Paddy Doyle, who joined us for a Belfast show. He's coming across to Liverpool and we're doing our best to put on a big, big show for everyone. Tickets are going to be priced at £20 and they will be available pretty soon on the Hot Water Comedy Club website. So do keep an eye on that. It is an all-ages event again. So we'll give you an update when those tickets go on sale. So for now, let's talk about the Zubamendi situation, which kind of caught me a little bit off guard going into tonight's stream because, you know, I spoke with David Lynch yesterday. Many of you guys will have probably watched that episode or listened to the podcast. And I asked him the question, is there any chance that Liverpool could revisit this deal? And his answer was very clearly, no, not from the club side. And I'm not aware of anything changing. But lots of people have been talking about the stalling of the contract negotiations between Zuba Mendy and Sociedad. Paul Joyce put that out there earlier on to say that a couple of sources have told him that those contract negotiations were being made difficult. Now, again, is that adding two and two together and some people coming up with six? It could well be. And as I sit here right now, I certainly have no personal information to say that the Zuba Mendy deal could be back on. I can just point to what happened when I spoke with David Lynch and it was a fairly straight no, it isn't happening. So unless somebody's on a wind up here or people know something I don't, I'm not aware of any situation that could see this happen. But let's have a listen to what Gary Neville, or have a look I should say, and Jamie Carragher have had to say about it. So speaking on his Stick to Football podcast, Gary Neville said, for this to have happened to Liverpool, he has said yes to them and then he's changed his mind late. There's no way we would have been there at different levels. He's definitely said yes to them and then changed his mind. He went on to say, I never trust Barcelona and Real Madrid either being involved with something and saying, we're going to come. We're not ready yet, but we'll take you. There's always uh, over there. They're always over there. Come here and you'll have a great career. But as Neville kind of alluded to, sometimes those deals don't materialise for players. Now, Jamie Carragher has also been speaking about the uh, decision from Martin Zubamendi to not take up the opportunity to come and join Liverpool. And this is what Jamie Carragher had to say. Listen, I do have to be honest. A lad of 25, he's just won the European Championship. He's playing at Real Sociedad. I know it's his hometown club, but I do think it's the time you'd make your Premier League move. So the perceived wisdom from the pros is that it is surprising that he hasn't wanted to take that next step in his career. And again, I want to reiterate, as I sit here speaking to you now, I'm not aware of anything changing around the Zubamendi situation, but it is certain that Sociedad are having problems extending his contract. I don't know if him and his agent are now playing hardball or they thought they were being promised something that wasn't coming their way. Do keep an eye on it and if anything changes, of course, we'll jump straight on to let you guys know of it. And I'd be more than happy to be on here talking about this deal being resurrected, but I have no information to that effect. Now, one bit of information we do know is that Bobby Clark is going to join Salzburg. Liverpool have agreed a fee a 17.5% sell-on clause and also a first refusal or buyback option. I don't think the player himself is going to be too quick to run back to Liverpool after, well, not really getting the chance to prove himself and he's going over to join Salzburg. So let's see what happens there. The numbers involved, I guess they're fair enough, but he was a promising young player that 
Personally, I would have just liked to have seen gone out on loan for the season and then we make a decision on his future. On top of that, we've seen other Liverpool youngsters post these black and white images. McConnell and Blair, I think, as well. Let's see what happens there. It looks like Liverpool are closing in on a deal to sign uh, Georgie Mamoradashvili, the goalkeeper from Valencia. Again, he's going to go on loan from Valencia to Bournemouth and then come to Liverpool. Now, the reason he can't sign for Liverpool and then go to Bournemouth is because of Premier League rules. You can't sign a player and loan a player to a club in the same league in the same transfer window. So Liverpool have had to get creative about this. And there looks like there's an agreement in place pretty much with everybody now. 30 to 35 million, including add-ons. And he will spend the year on loan at Bournemouth before Liverpool have to commit to that deal then to bring him in in 2025. Now, what that means for Alison Becker's future at this moment in time, I don't know. I don't think there's any impending departure or any indication from Ali that he wants to go. But Liverpool are just future-proofing against any loss. What you don't want to happen here is Ali to say he wants to go in a year and then you're rushing around trying to find a solution and bring in a goalkeeper. So I've nothing wrong with this from the club, but I do want us to act in this window because it has been nothing short of shambolic. One name who's been linked today is Maxime de Kuyper, who is a left-back that plays for Club Bruges in Belgium. I don't know much about him other than that. We've seen David Lynch as well say to keep an eye on the Costa situation. Maybe Liverpool revisit out Nuri. But that is pretty much about it. Right now, we are still in the land of frustration where Liverpool's owners have shown once again that they just don't have the will to make Liverpool competitive and really want to win. Now, lots of people again tonight said to me, do you think that the reason we're selling some of these fringe players like Carvalho, um, Bobby Clark and others is because we're planning something big? We're working on something where we're trying to build up a pile of money. Again, I love the optimistic thinking, but we don't know of anything. So we have to just take it at face value. And at face value, as I sit here, two months into the window, no signing and no imminent signing to come in and help us strengthen for the upcoming season as of yet. There is still time, of course, and I love the optimism from some of our fans, but let's be honest here. Once again, FSG have left supporters short and the manager, most importantly, who will be the sacrificial lamb if this doesn't work out. And I think that's incredibly unfair on him. If you give him the tools that he's asked for to do the job and he fails, that's one thing. But sending the man out there underprepared, that's not good enough. So let's hope that these owners, Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes, Get this all sorted out before the window comes to a close because right now, well, you've seen social media. The fans aren't happy with the owners, nor should they be, and it's about time that they get called out for their miserly ways. So I'll be back tomorrow. As always, we'll have a video at about half past five, and then I'll see you at 8.45 tomorrow night. Let me know your thoughts on the Zubamendi situation. If you think maybe it could be revisited, maybe you've read something I don't know about, Feel free to let us know in the comment section. But as always, I try to just be as honest as I can. And I've not seen anything to the contrary to say that this deal is dead in the water. So, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Much love as always. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.